first thing I want to say is if you ever have the opportunity to build a an L and D team from scratch, I mean, literally, you know, your organization has nothing related to learning, and you're given the opportunity and the funding, and really the go ahead to build something. It is so fun. It's to me, it's been, it's really been the privilege of a lifetime to just build and to do whatever it is that we think is the right thing to do and to have that freedom. I mean, I, I can't say enough about the opportunity. And with anything, as you're starting your journey, you, you need to have that foundational model, that paradigm, whatever it is that you want to call it, you have to have that roadmap. And luckily for myself and, and John Quinn, who's sort of been my co-pilot this whole time, we met Lisa and, and Crystal in San Francisco during one of the, the workshops and we just latched on to this LCD model and we started using this as, as our roadmap, you know, as that, that way to, to kind of start building and incorporating all the techniques that they shared with us and all the things that we learned in terms of objectives and, and clusters and learning assets. And so we've really leveraged that over the last couple of years to continue the journey. And I, I mean, it would be an understatement to, to say that that was valuable for us and for our team, because I would say that it was essential. And without a, a, t a model like the LCD model, a methodology like the, 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 the model that Crystal and Lisa have developed, I mean, I wouldn't really be talking to you today because I started really with an idea that I wanted to train folks. <laughs> that was pretty much it. And I had to draw on my previous experiences, being a teacher and all that. But just even with those experiences in mind, even with the abilities to to stand in front of someone and teach them something or train them on something, it just wouldn't have happened without a paradigm, a, a, mo a model. If you were to, to be a part of a, an initiative where you're building something, or even if you're rebuilding something, to, to really consider this model, to consider a model, and to really use that as the way forward and It's a way to think about how to build and to think about how to refine content. To me, it's a roadmap. To me, it's a vision. To me, it's also a set of strategic uh, points that you can use to assess your progress, that you can use to determine your next steps, and, and definitely as a way to go back at the end of the year to refine everything that you've done to make sure that you're still on that right path so that at the end of the journey, you're not like a mile away from where you're supposed to be, but rather you're in the center of where things should be. So the question is, you know, what type of tools do you use given a limited budget and giving, given the fact that, you know, once you sort of choose a tool, there's really, I mean, there's still some sense of going back, but you know, if you purchase this subscription or this tool and you kind of have to go with it. So what are the tools that, that we chose and what, the, what are the tools that future builders can choose? You know, and when I think about the, the I call it the tech stack, and when I think about the tool bag that, that L&D should have at their disposal, to me, it's, it's clearly biased towards cloud-based technology 100%. I mean, for us, we decided that instead of Adobe Captivate or Articulate Storyline, we were going to go with Articulate, but 360 Rise, which is their, their modern cloud-based authoring tool, right? So that gives you the chance to be flexible. It's so much more shareable. There's metrics involved in it because it's cloud-based and they collect all these metrics and you know how difficult it is to get and gather metrics at the end of the year. Um, not only that, but cloud-based tools, because you know I've been living in the startup world for a long time, they're so malleable in the sense that they improve upon themselves each and every month, right? We have a monthly release cycle at Bluescape. So that means that every month our product gets that much better. So if you're into cloud-based technology and you select a tool like Articulate 360, that means that there's the potential for that tool to form into to become something new each and every release cycle, something better. And so you're not stuck with like waiting for Adobe Captivate to come up with the next version of Captivate. You're actually living 
through the, the, the growth of the product and the tools. And as it gets better, your team gets better because you're given more features, more functionalities. You can do a lot more with the authoring process. So that's one of the tools that we decided on, right? And we also have uh, technical writers on our team as well. And I actually lost a technical writer because I decided to move him away from a more traditional tool. Uh, it was called Madcap Flare. It's a really popular authoring tool for tech writers. We moved away from that and we chose a tool called Document 360, which is also cloud-based. It gives you the chance to manipulate your content, to share, to duplicate, to do all kinds of great things with your content. But I lost him because he was so tied to the last two decades of technical writing using Madcap Flare that he just wasn't willing to convert to a new tool. And to me, it was worth losing him in order to gravitate towards this new technology because I just knew that it was the right way to go. And you know, since then we have built three different knowledge bases and we could never have built three distinct knowledge bases without the help of cloud technology and the things that a cloud-based tool really offers you at the end of the day. And then of course we have our a learning management system and we part, we've been partnering with uh, an organization called Skill Jar in Seattle for the last four or so years. So we stayed with them and as their organization has grown, their tool, their platform has grown and we've really been the recipients of those benefits as well. Um, and then it comes to, and then, you know, something I should also mention is video, right? A part of our learning team, we, we actually had the opportunity to build and create a, a studio for filming, for creating videography. So we built that and that's part of our tech stack as well, because we chose the, we were able to choose like these great cameras, the lighting, uh, the space, we were able to choose the technology that we use to edit the videography and to share the videography. And we actually use a platform called, a platform called Wistia. Uh, it's kind of like a corporate YouTube upon which we host our content. And that's been really beneficial when you're talking about metrics and analyzing video and seeing who's engaged, who's not. It even tells you at what point during the video do we, people break away from it, giving you the chance to go back and refine the video and, and ask yourselves, you know, are we doing a really good job during the 15 seconds that folks are watching this? Or is it so boring that after 15 seconds they're deciding to watch something else? So it's, it's a great way to, to go back and to analyze, to refine and to curate content. And I would say as, as an aggregate, this tech stack, you know, we, we were lucky enough to have chosen the right tools, I think. And as an aggregate, I think it's a force multiplier. It gets you into marketing. It, it gets you into sales. It gets you into product management because it allows you to share and it allows you to bring people in to collaborate with you. And I think for me, that was one of the things that, that I felt was lacking in terms of L&D in the past, you know, the sense of being siloed to simply L&D and to not being able to collaborate with people across the organization. So, you know, if you're into building, if you're into growth, then you're also into creating relationships and building bridges and creating a, bit, a better foundation for yourselves in order to, to speak to, to the learning that you're creating and to have a more, a much more motivational, um, sort of much more inspirational um, aspect to learning than, than ever before. And so that's really helped us, you know, the ability to use technology and social media and to really treat our content as if it was our own little company within the company and that we were building and growing this company along the way. And, um, you know, that that's really been something. So, you know, I would definitely say consider the tools if you have an opportunity to consider the, the, the cloud-based tools, the modern tools that are out there that can accomplish these things. And even if you're rebuilding and, and you're able to choose a new set of tools, you know, definitely give that consideration because no one says we have to stay with the tools of the past in order to accomplish the work for the future, right? It should be actually the opposite. During that process, you know, we, we hired, but we hired for talent. And that's something that I've talked to Crystal about as well is I never, when I looked at resumes or portfolios, I never really looked at whether they've done this before or if they've spent three to five years in l and I look for potential. I look for dynamic folks who really wanted to do something new and to really kind of break ground. And so 
we hired a bunch of people who've never really done L and D work before, but who as a, an aggregate are able to apply all these different skills that we needed in order to accomplish the things that we've wanted. So, you know, the culture has been amazing. And the fact that we were able to build the culture from the very beginning has been has such a great thing. And one of the, one of the, the, I guess the mottos we used to have from the very beginning, and it still applies today is, Hey, this is our, our content. So tell us how much we suck so that we can get better. Just tell us, just give us everything that, that you want to give us in terms of feedback, especially all the bad stuff, because there's no way we're ever going to get better because we want to iterate. We want to create, we want to produce. And the only way we're going to be better is you, you got to tell us that we suck and you got to tell us that how, all the bad things that we're doing so that we can actually improve and do better. 